Here was the forerunner of a brilliant new line in motor cars cruising home through the English countryside. And so the Mini Miner moves into full production. It has passed all its tests with distinction. Now the public can find out for themselves. An engineering achievement is ready for production line assembly. And here's the secret of how the wonder car can be produced in such large numbers. The Morris production line organization, itself something unique. The components are collected into sets, passed through a degreaser on the assembly lines where they are assembled into complete engines. Here, all the latest tools for speedy assembly are in use, and time means money. This operation saves a motorist part of the tedium of running in. The engine is driven electrically, automatically fed with a special running in lubricant while it is still on the bench. Thus, the pistons are scientifically run in before ever the compact engine is fitted into the car. Gearbox and sump in one. Real space-saving brilliance. Thousands and thousands of these famous engines are lined up, all with a job to do. At one of the huge BMC plants, the giant presses start stamping out parts of the new car's body. Another fine Morris motor car body is on its complicated way to assembly. First, the sections are clamped in jigs and welded. Dents are smoothed out and imperfections removed. The undercasing of the new car moves overhead here, where there are always parts, components, making their electrically controlled approach to the assembly line. built up in sections like a prefabricated house. Only no house ever had such a large ratio of internal space to external measurements. Now on an ever moving line, in complete sections, the shell of the new motor car builds up. A really spacious, roomy car body has been clamped inside a jig, ready for final welding. After assembly, again the inspection to see that the body is ready for painting. Here's the start of a fascinating process that will gratify any motorist, adding years to the potential life of his car. 
the welded body is ready for the rust-proofing rotor dip. Gripped like a chicken on a spit to go first through steam jets to be cleansed. Then into hot air blasts to get it completely dry. And so on to complete submersion in the rust preventing bath. Now it's ready for spraying. The human element invades the automation of the production line in a big way. The body is dried, then many hands must rub the surface smooth for paint. Hands and eyes work on each and every body. There's a suction device in operation wherever the spray guns are used, which clears the air continuously. Six separate coats are sprayed on, by man or by machine, before the bodies get their final gloss. In another section, the trim shop is geared for big-scale production. Tailored upholstery adds luxury to comfort. And from the paint shop, the bodies move to main assembly. Here, the harness of electrical wires is fitted and joined up. The clock goes in, quickly followed by the steering column. And finally, the front grille. On a secondary assembly line, the front subframe is ready for the engine gearbox unit to be fitted in its revolutionary transverse position. So neat, it seems incredible that nobody thought of it before. The rear subframe is comparatively simple. Here, again, the suspension was the main problem, solved by the adoption of a variable rate system using rubber in compression. The rubber cone needs only a little damping, which gives it quite exceptional endurance. Those two subframes embody suspension principles which have enabled a 1,200 weight car to carry four grown passengers without the slightest hint of body shape. They are now transferred to the main assembly line, connected together in position.